Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have another example involving torque, the concept of torque. We have a step ladder, a rather tall step ladder. It's two meters tall. Notice that it's set up in such a way that uh, there's a cable here or a rope or a string or a bar holding the two ends of the ladder together. If we assume that there's no friction between the ladder and the floor, that's always a good assumption for safety, then the question is what will be the tension on this string or this rope right here to keep the two ends of the ladder from slipping outward. Notice that we have a person about three quarters of the way up at a height of three meters relative to the, the slope right here. Notice that the rope is tied at the halfway point between the bottom and the top of the ladder. Let's say that the mass of the person is 70 kilograms and let's say ignore the weight of the ladder just to make it a little bit simpler so that we can see how the problem works. How do we find the tension here? Again, this is a section where we deal with torque. If we call this point A and we call this point B and we call this point C, let's first calculate the sum of all the torques acting about point A. The sum of all the torques acting about point A must add up to zero because hopefully everything is at equilibrium. If it's not, this person up here is in trouble. Now let's recognize all the forces that act on the system. Well, we have the weight of the person acting downward, and so we have the mg of the person, mg. We have a force at A pushing upward, the force at A, and we have a force at B pushing upward, force at B. Notice since a person standing on this side of the ladder, I would assume that force at A was bigger than force at B, but the two together, F sub A plus F sub B, the two forces together, should add up to the weight of the person, again ignoring the weight of the ladder. Sum up all the torques about point A. We can say that zero is equal to well, first the force, the torque caused by the person. Notice that this would be a clockwise torque because that would be a, a negative torque, a negative torque, a clockwise torque because it would cause the ladder to move, move in this direction. Minus the weight of the person, mg, times the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to the line of action of the force. That's this distance right here. Let's call this d1, and we'll get in just a moment what that is equal to, times d1. Plus, now we look at the force, the reactionary force of the floor pushing back against the ladder. That would cause a positive torque, because it's a counterclockwise direction, plus the force at B times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point. That would be this distance right here. Let's call this distance D2. Now we need to solve for F sub B, the force, the reactionary force of the floor pushing against the ladder. F sub B times D2 is therefore equal to, when we move this across, a positive mg times D1, or F sub B is equal to mg times D1 divided by D2, the ratio of those two distances. That is equal to the weight of the person times D1. Notice that this distance is two meters. That means the, the distance from here to the halfway point is one meter. And since the person is three quarters of the way up the ladder, D1 has to be three quarters of a meter. And divide this by distance two, which is the full two meters. That means that the force at B, the meters cancel out. Oop, I have too many meters here. The meters cancel out. And that leaves us with three eighths the weight of the person. That is equal to the force at B. Since the force at A plus the force at B must add up to the full weight of the person, that means that F sub A is equal to the full weight of the person, mg, minus the force at B, which is mg minus 3 eighths mg, which is equal to 5 eighths mg. The force at A is 5 eighths the weight of the person, and the force at B is 3 eighths the weight of the person. But we still haven't found the tension on the string right here. But we are a step closer because now we know the force at B. And notice that if we put the pivot point over here now, and we only look at the right side of the ladder, there's only two forces causing a torque relative to this side of the ladder. It would be the force at B, and it would be the tension in the string acting in this direction. Let's call that the tension T. 
we can now go ahead and solve the problem again by picking this at our pivot point and saying that the sum of the torques at C must add up to zero. And notice if we do that, we have the 4ZB acting in this direction. That's a counterclockwise motion. That's a positive torque. Force at B multiplied times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point. That's this distance right here. And that distance would be one meter minus the tension in the string, because that would cause a clockwise torque. Clockwise torque is a negative torque, so minus the tension in the string times this distance right here. And since I don't know yet what this distance is here, I'll call that distance 3 times distance 3, because now we have to figure out what distance 3 is equal to. This will allow us to solve for the tension. That's what we're ultimately trying to find. We're trying to find the tension in the string here. But to do that, we need to know what distance 3 is which means we need to find this distance right here. This is distance 3. This is the hypotenuse, which is equal to 2 meters. And we don't know any of the angles yet. We need one of the angles. OK, to do that, we need to, let's see, what would be the best thing to do? Well, let's take this entire triangle right here. Let's take the big triangle of the ladder. Notice that these are similar triangles. We know that the hypotenuse in this case is 4 meters and we know that the base here of the triangle then has to be 1 meter. That allows us to solve for the... Hmm, let's find the angle here. Let's call it theta. How do we find this angle theta? Well we have the adjacent side and we have the hypotenuse. That means that the cosine of the angle theta by definition is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse in this case, the cosine of the angle theta is equal to the adjacent side, which is 1 meter, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 4 meters. That means that theta is equal to the arc cosine, the inverse cosine, of 1 over 4. That allows us to find theta. 1 divided by 4 equals, take the inverse cosine of that, and we get an angle of 75.52 degrees. 75.52 degrees. 1 divided by 4 Take the arc cosine of that, and we get 75.52 degrees. That means we know this angle right here, theta, and now we need to find D3. D3 is opposite to the angle. That means that D3 is equal to the hypotenuse, 2 meters, times the sine of the angle, and it would be the sine of 75.52 degrees. Now that we know D3, we're ready to solve for the tension. The tension times D3 is equal to 1 times F sub B. We know that F sub B is equal to 3 8 mg. That means that the tension is equal to 3 8 mg, that is the force at B, divided by D3. This is equal to 3 8 mg divided by D3, which can now be said to be 2 meters. 2 meters times the sine of 75.52 degrees. Take the sine of this, multiply it times 2, multiply it times 8, that's all in the denominator, take the inverse of that, and multiply that times 3, and multiply it times the mass, n times 9.8 for g, and we have a tension equal to 133 newtons. All right, going back and see what we did here to figure this out. The first thing we did was pick one of the two sides. We picked this side right here, we picked side A, and we found using the torques, and using this as a pivot point, the sum of the torques about 0.8 to find the force at B. We noticed that the force at B was 3 8 mg, knowing that the total force of the floor pushing back and the ladder has to equal to the weight of the person. Remember, we ignored the weight of the ladder. That means that F at A had to be 5 8 mg. We didn't need it, but at least we saw how that works. Then we moved our pivot point to pivot point C and only looked at the right side of the ladder here. And we can say again that the sum of the torques about point C must add up to zero. And the only two torques adding to the torques is the force at B and the tension. The force at B 
causes a counterclockwise torque that's positive. The tension is a negative torque because that causes a, um, that causes a clockwise torque. We need to find D3. That means we need to look at this triangle right here, which we had over here. But since we didn't know this distance, we went ahead and looked at the full triangle of this side of the ladder. This was 4 meters, this was 1 meter. Therefore, we could find the angle. D3 is then equal to 2 meters times the sine of 75.52 degrees after we found the angle. All we have to do then is plug that in for D3 and solve for the tension. And that's how we did that.